This adventure began when we discovered an abandoned clothing factory in none other than Cambodia. Welcome to Cambodia! Our mission was to try to make something beautiful out of parts of clothing that had been left behind. <laughs> Stop. One lifetime worth of clothes. But things got complicated fast. <coughs> How did we get here in the first place? This story starts with my closet. For the last five years, I've been on a crazy mission to get people to stop buying so many new clothes. Yes, that includes me. But how do you get other people to stop cheating on their old clothes with the newer, sexier ones? We have all grossly underestimated how important it is to fall madly in love with the things that we wear and the clothing that we buy. My mission brought me traveling all over Asia, and that's how I met this guy, who wears the same clothes every single day. Ben always has weird ideas like tying people underwater or hanging them off buildings. So when he asked me if I can find the largest pile of clothing possible, I took him very seriously. With the help of an organization called Dorsu, I found an entire factory abandoned almost a decade ago, filled with clothing laying piled in bags. Stuff that we should have been wearing, but instead was left all behind, never to see the light of day again when the factory went bankrupt. Ben's ridiculous plan was to bring thousands of pounds of abandoned clothing back to life. Right now the big idea is to create nature scenes out of clothing. So a tree, a waterfall, and a tornado. I wanted to find a way to hang thousands of pounds of clothing vertically from the walls and the ceilings of a decaying factory using whatever materials we could find like rope, fishnets, and bamboo. We somehow convinced amazing volunteers to come in every morning, arming ourselves with masks and insect repellent to tackle the avalanche of dust and mosquitoes. Together we sorted through bags and bags of clothing and hauled cart full of stuff from one part of the factory to another. All this to find the perfect color palette we would need to bring our idea to life. But as the week went on, things started to unravel. It's 3 a.m., the shoot is in like four hours and we still have no, no idea what we're doing. Help. We really wanted to make people feel a human connection to the structures. There was no going back here. All these volunteers trusted that this project would help plant the seed of change to a very serious problem. That every single thing that we wear has a hidden cost. This wasn't a story about structures and abandoned clothing. This was a story about people coming together to try and challenge one of the largest industries on the planet. It didn't matter that nobody had any construction experience or that we had only access to simple household objects. We had people that were passionate, whether that meant covering themselves in dust in order to create beautiful streaks of light, crawling around on the dirty floor, sorting through an endless stream of fabric, or braving their fear of heights just to suspend fabric and lights in the perfect position. These everyday people were the true heroes, so we decided to use our volunteers as models on a mission to rescue 2,500 kilos of clothing, the average amount of clothing you'll probably wear over your lifetime. But it wasn't just about rescuing the clothes, it was about remembering where they came from like the 70 million trees that are cut down every year to make the fibers that we wear, or the 2,700 liters of water that is required to make every single cotton t-shirt, and the clean air that we lose every year from the clothing that just ends up lying forgotten in our closets. That's it. It's a wrap. How are you doing? We did it. Really good. Wow. Survived? Yeah, we survived. We did it. Hearing these statistics is one thing, but standing face to face with them is another. It was pretty overwhelming to be so close to the truth, but I was encouraged by another truth, that one person has the power to leave the planet 2,500 kilograms lighter. 